Without further ado, we have Grace from Roger CPA presenting on from point A to CPA. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, so I know most of you do have your camera off, but if you could go ahead and share your camera, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, before I do get started, I am really curious as to who I am speaking to and who my audience is. So I would actually like to take a quick moment to go around the room, introduce yourself with your name, what year of school you are in, as well as an interesting fact about yourself. So I will go first. My name is Grace Ha. I have been in the professional world for four years now. Um, and an interesting fact about myself is that I am a horrible driver and my friends are terrified to get in my car. When I lived in SF, I scratched my car on all four sides. So I am indeed a horrible driver, but um, I will go ahead and let uh, Gemma go next. Hi everyone, my name is Gemma. I'm currently a senior at CSUN. Um, an interesting fact about me is I actually get motion sickness. So 30 minutes into the car, I'll be throwing up. <laughs> I'll, think I'll pass it on to Dr. <laughs> yeah, so um, whoever goes, like, just go ahead and pass it on to the next person. Okay. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Tong. I'm Sam Azuma. I'm the senior at CSUN. I will graduate December. 2022 and one year and a half and uh, an interesting fact about me that I can speak another language instead of English and my native Vietnamese is French. I will pass to Ninelia. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Ninelia. I'm graduating this semester and one interesting fact about me, I learned cooking during the pandemic. Very cool. Julian. Hey guys, my name is Julian. Um, I'm currently a senior here at CSUN and I graduate um, next December. Um, and a fun fact about me is that I grew up for about five years in Boston. Very cool. Um, do you want to pass it on to someone next? Let's go with uh, Eric. Oh, you might be on mute, Eric. Oh, still on mute. <laughs> ah, there we yeah, go. Right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Cabreras. I'm a junior at CSUN. Uh, fun fact about me, uh, I've driven to Los Angeles to New Jersey twice, back and forth, like twice. Oh, wow. Very cool. Uh, let's pass it to uh, Catherine. Uh, sure. Apologies if you hear the gardeners in the back. I'm Catherine. <laughs> junior <laughs> junior transfer and so i guess fun fact about me is i'm actually a licensed archery coach very cool <laughs> that is cool do you go pretty often then like i used to today? but it's one of those things where like i haven't really maintained my equipment well enough during the pandemic because gotcha. i have a different bow than what i used to what i usually did when i was like in high school and so it's been oh, I do hear the gardeners. <laughs> yeah, apologies for that. No but problem. yeah. It, it was a big pastime now. It's more of a teaching thing. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing. Let's go ahead and pass it on to the next person you'd like to choose, Catherine. Uh, do you want to pass it on to the next person, Catherine? I could jump in. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Albert. I'm going to be graduating this fall. Um, I guess a fun fact about me is I really enjoy running. I've ran four marathons. I, my last one was uh, three hours and 15 minutes. Wow, impressive. That is <laughs> very cool. I'm sure you guys are all learning cool things about each other as well through this. Um, do you want to go ahead and pass it on to the next person, Albert? Uh, yeah, I'll pass it off to, I'm not sure who has gone, Mia? Okay, Mia um, wrote in the chat, I'm currently at work, so I will type in the chat, I'm Mia, junior. Uh, interesting fact about me is I love film photography. Thank you, Mia, for sharing. Um, okay, who do we have left? Um, 
Let's go with Drew Friedman. <laughs> Thank you very much, Grace. Hi, everyone. Hello. My name is Drew Friedman. Um, I'm currently in Boston. Awesome. Uh, this is one of the cities that I've lived in on the East Coast. I've lived in almost every major city on the East Coast, uh, as well as got to live in Basel, Switzerland for a couple of years. I am a brand new colleague of Grace's. Today is day yes. one for me <laughs> at UWorld Rogers CPA. And I heard someone mention Boston before, then I heard someone mention Marathon before. Today is the day of the Boston Marathon. Um, and I thought that was a fun coincidence. So Yeah, uh, you have to qualify for that one, because that <laughs> one is very tough. I understand that you have to do a yeah. lot of other times. Uh, and Grace has allowed me to join you all as a learning opportunity. So that's the reason I am here. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and go with Joel and then Maria, Dixon, Kevin, and Ashley, and then we'll go ahead and get started. And then if you guys are not able to share, that is totally fine too. Um, just let us know in the chat. All right. I So hello, I'm Joel. I'm a senior, so I'm graduating in the spring. And a fun fact about me is that I am an identical twin. Very cool. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Joel. Um, I forget who I said next. I think um, Dixon. Yep. Hi, my name is Dixon. I'm graduating in December 20, 2022 or spring 23. Fun fact about me is that I have um, attended a foot challenge, but I lost. A foot challenge? What is that? So I, I have to eat a... Um, Wow, is it like two pounds of noodles? That's a foot oh, challenge. Wow. Oh, okay, okay, a food challenge. I don't know why I, I heard foot challenge. I was like, foot ch is it foot? <laughs> 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 no, food, food, food. Okay, uh, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Kevin and then Ashley. Um, yeah, wh whoever wants to go next, feel free. I can share. Awesome. Uh, my name is Kevin Nieves. I am a fourth year senior. I'm going to be also graduating in December 22. Uh, and fun fact about me is I enjoy playing guitar sometimes. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. Um, alrighty. Who else is next? Or should we just go ahead and move on? I think Maria typed it in the chat. And then after, um, you could go ahead with the presentation. But she says, hello, everyone. I am in the office, so I will type. My name is Maria. I will be graduating on May 2023. My major is accounting. Fun fact about me is that I like to skydive and travel. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you all. It was a pleasure getting to know a little bit about all of you guys. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So I did go ahead and drop the sign-in sheet. So if you haven't already filled that out, make sure you do. On today's agenda, I will be covering some CP exam basics, touching lightly on what the 2024 CP exam evolution is going to look like, as well as some of the top challenges to passing the CP exam. We'll have a Kahoot game for those of you who can stay around still and then we will open the floor for any questions at the end. So um, a little bit of background about us. So we actually used to be a company called Roger CP Review. And about three years ago, we got acquired by a company called UWorld. All you need to know about UWorld is that they are a worldwide leader in online learning. So um, UWorld actually has 98% market share within the MCAT. So there is no medical school in the US that does not use our curriculum. And so through that acquisition, we essentially have been able to invest a lot, millions of more dollars into to the content and also we have been able to adopt the MCAT question model over to our CPA review questions and so through that we have been able to raise our pass rate from 91 to 94 percent which makes us currently the highest pass rate in the market and through our smart path technology we are able to allow our users to pass three times faster so um, you know all of our efforts our technology our pass rate have allowed us to receive some recognition, which is why um, many firms, hundreds of firms across the US have partnered with us. Um, so some of these firms, as well as many other firms, essentially 
provide the URL Roger course for their staff in order to ensure CP exam success. So getting into it, why is it an exciting time to become a CPA? So if you already did not know, you are able to be an accountant for tens, 20 years without having your CPA license, but there are a lot of really great things that come with getting your license. So um, first off, I would just like to give you all a real life example. If you have been to one of my presentations, you may have already heard this example, but um, you know, I had a friend who worked at EY and he was within the tax department for three years and it took him the three full years to pass his exams. And the fourth one actually was passed September 2020. So during the pandemic when the world was really weird, right? So he actually wanted to make the jump from public to private. So he set the status that he passed all four exams and set the status that he was sort of looking for a new position. The next morning when he woke up, there were over 15 messages in his inbox. Within two weeks, he was able to secure a new position within private, the private sector, and also got a $10,000 pay bump. So, you know, that is a leverage that the CPA license can bring for you. Not only will it give you leverage when you want new, um, when you want a promotion, if you want a raise, um, but moving on. Um, within public accounting, which is where the CPA license is, uh, you know, the creme de la creme of the industry, um, there's essentially three sort of positions that you could go into. So you can go into audit, you can go into tax, you can go into management slash consulting. And when you are within staff, you make any, it takes anywhere from three years to get promoted to senior. Um, you typically do start off at around $55,000. Once you get promoted to senior, you jump up to about $75,000. So that essentially takes three years. Years, And within public accounting, if you did not know this, um, it is extremely hard for you to get promoted past the senior title if you have not passed your CP exam. So, um, you know, if you really are serious about, you know, becoming a partner someday, and uh, actually serious about a career in accounting, it is essential that you start your CP exam process ASAP so that you can begin your career trajectory early on. Also so that upper management takes notice of you and will remember you for when the time for promotions come around. So, um, you know, entry level, you do start at around 55. Once you get to senior, you're making about 75. Once you get to manager, which takes about six years, you'll be making 100 thousand plus and once you get to partner you will be making a ton of money so you know how many of you guys do not like money please raise your hand if you do not like money I will wait Alrighty. well I bring this up because there was a study done and it showed that licensed CPAs make on average a million dollars more during their career than non-licensed CPAs so I want you all to imagine a huge pile of cash in the middle of the room. All you have to do to get that is pass four tests. So what a great trade-off for a million dollars, right? And that's on top of the salary that you're making. So um, in order to get that million dollars, these are the four steps that you have to obtain, which is education, exam, ethics, and experience. So in the state of California, in order to sit for the CP exam, you will need a bachelor's degree. It does not have to be in accounting. It can be in any subject. You will also need 24 semester units in accounting, 24 semester units in business. So um, that is what you need to sit for the exam. That pretty much should mean that most of you should be eligible to sit for the exam once you graduate, especially since CSUN has a really great accounting program. Um, when you are trying to get your license, that's when you need 20 extra units in accounting and 10 units in ethics. If there are any of you who are going to get take a master's in accounting, um, you don't need to worry about these next two slides. You will automatically become CPA licensure eligible in terms of the educational requirements. But for those of you who are not planning on getting your master's, you should pay attention to this. Um, also, uh, you know, taking classes at your local community college are way cheaper than getting your master's. So um, if you're not too interested in, you know, spending a ton of money, you can get all of these units at your local CC. So um, you will have to get six minimum units in accounting. You can take up to 14 units in business, business courses 
or you can even take nine units in courses related to accounting or business. So um, it is mandatory that you get those six extra units in accounting, the other 14 you can just get in business. Next is ethics, so you do need 10 units in ethics. Mandatory that you take an ethics accounting class. This is something that you need for your license. The other seven units you can take in courses related to ethics, or you may even take one course in philosophy, religion, or theology. Next is the exam. So you're going to apply online with the California Board of Accountancy. You are eligible to apply once your final transcripts are out. They are currently accepting electronic transcripts. So I would recommend that route over the paper mail route of the transcripts. Um, side note, if you get your transcripts emailed to you from your university and then you send them in, you're going to have to start your application all over again. So I would recommend that you ask your university to directly send them in for you. Once the board approves of your transcripts, you get something called an ATT or an authorization to test. This will give you 90 days to choose which sections you would like to sit for and pay for them. And this may or may not be on the Kahoot game. Alrighty, so each part of the exam is $225. That means each time you fail a part, you are gonna pay an extra $275 because it's a $50 reapplication fee and a $225 exam fee. So expensive mistake, yeah. Um, so again, ATT 90 days after you have paid for your exams, you get something called an NTS or a notice to schedule. So um, this notice to schedule is good for nine months. That means any exam that you paid for, you have to sit for within the nine months or else you will forfeit those parts. So, um, you know, let's say you set a goal. You said, I want to pass all four exams within nine months, which is a very realistic goal. But work gets in the way, life gets in the way, something personal gets in the way, and you're only able to sit for three out of the four that you paid for, you would end up forfeiting the $225 fee. So we typically do not recommend that you pay for all four parts at one time. Instead, we recommend pay for two, reapply with the 50, and then pay for two more. Alrighty. On exam day, you will have to bring a physical copy of your notice to schedule. So I would recommend just printing it out, leaving it in your it in your car as soon as you get it. Um, you're also going to have to bring two forms of government issued ID. So driver's licenses and passports are the most popular methods. Um, hypothetically, let's say you only have an ID or you only have a passport, you only have one government issued ID. In that case, you are able to bring a credit card or a debit card with your name on it, but all of the names on the three items do have to be identical, so make sure those are all aligned before exam day. Um, if it is different, they're not going to let you into the exam center. So again, you do have to bring two forms of government-issued IDs if you have it. Um, one really weird rule that Prometrics has specific to CP exam candidates is that articles of clothing are prohibited from being removed during testing. So what does that mean? That means if you sit down at your seat wearing a puffer or a jacket and you get hot during the exam, you're not able to take it off at your seat. You would actually have to sign out, put it in your locker, get fingerprinted back in. And on exam day, you do want every minute and second that you can get. So Word of advice, don't wear a parka or a puffer jacket to the exam center. Maybe wear lighter layers such as a, a flannel, cardigan, but I would also recommend that you do bring an extra jacket because you never know what the temperature is going to be like at that specific Prometric Center, okay? Alrighty, so moving on, I'm curious to know if you all understand how the 18-month window works, so I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say that I sit for FAR on July 1st and I get my score that I passed FAR on July 14th. Does my 18 month window begin ticking down on the 1st or the 14th? So the day that I sat and took the exam or the day that I got my score? What do you think? Feel free to unmute and shout it out or even put it in the chat box up to you all. So the that, day that you pass it? So the 14th, you think? Yeah. Okay, let's see what other people. So sat on the exam. So yeah, I vote on set. That, okay. 14th. Okay, so there's a little bit of a mix. So 
actually it is going to be that you sat and took the exam. So the first, that's when the 18 months would start ticking down essentially. That basically means that you have 18 months minus those 14 days to get the other three parts of the exam done. So um, to give you all a bigger picture idea or yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. Um, but to give you all a bigger picture idea, I'm going to throw some numbers at you. So month one, I, I'm going to go in the order that the slide is in, but the, the months are not going to be the same. So month one, I sit for FAR, I pass it. Month six, I sit for regulation, I pass it. Month 12, I sit for audit, I pass it. Month 18, I sit for BEC, I fail. But month 19, I retake BEC and I pass it. As of right now, I have passed all four parts of the exam, right? But because the 18 months have run out for FAR, even though I pass FAR, I have to retake it. So, you know, with that in mind, so again, month one take, took FAR, passed it. Month six, regulation passed it. Month 12, audit passed it. Month 18, I took BEC, passed it. I mean, failed it. And then month 19, I retook BEC and I passed it. So again, even though I passed FAR, 12 months have expired for FAR. So even though I pass it, I have to retake it. So, you know, that's how people get into that endless cycle of having to keep taking their CP exams because there is that 18 month window that you have to pass all four parts of the exam by. So with that in mind, you never want to set a goal to pass all four parts within 18 months. You always want to set a much shorter goal, such as nine or 12 months, just to account for any hiccups that there might be along the way. Okay. Ready now moving on. Um, what is the CP exam? So these are some of the courses that you have taken or will be taken throughout undergrad that correlate to the four parts of the CPA exam. Audit, full cycle of an audit, senior level audit class, FAR, intermediate one, two, government, not-for-profit, BEC, cost manager, financial management, IT, regulation, tax, ethics, and law. And this is the order that we are currently recommending. So keep in mind, there is no, you can sit for the exams in any order that you would like to. If you want to take the EC first, if you want to take regulation first, you definitely can. But we do typically recommend that you sit for FAR first because it takes the longest amount of time to study for. And oftentimes it is sort of like the harder part to pass. And also the 18 months start taking down after you pass that first exam. So it does make the most sense to get the most time consuming and difficult exam out of the way first. So again, you do not have to start off with FAR, but that is just our recommendation. Um, audit and BEC were sort of changed in July. So there were some minor changes made to the audit and BEC section this July. So, um, you know, when there is a change made to an exam, you do not want to take those exams first, but um, this is the order so far, regulation, audit, and BEC. So how many of you knew that there is a 2024 CPA exam evolution coming? Raise your hand. Okay, I see a couple people. No? Okay, yeah. Well, if you did not know, there is an evolution coming in 2024. So typically when they change the CPA exam, they do one of one or the other. They either change the content of the exam or they change the structure. But in 24, they are changing both content and structure. So um, this is sort of what you can expect. So as of right now, we have FAR regulation, audit, and BEC, right? Um, FAR regulation and audit will be kept as the core classes. So the three exams will remain pretty similar. However, they will be turning BEC into three disciplines that you can choose from. And I'm not going to read it, but they're the outlying circles that you can see. Um, and, you know, the AICPA also is recognizing through, um, you know, surveys done that data analytics and technology information systems, um, all these technical things are a very integral part of the accounting industry. And so what they are doing is adding all of that into all six sections of the exam. So that means the CP exam is gonna become more difficult. Pass rates are gonna drop even more. Um, so 
what does that mean for you as a student? If you are graduating this or next year, you really do want to build, <laughs> someone said sad face. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you are graduating this or next year, that means you need to build that sense of urgency for yourself and try to pass the exams before 2024. Because even this July, when they made those, those like minor changes to audit and BEC, pass rates dropped. 2024 pass rates are going to drop significantly. So you want to be on the train that passes the exams before 2024, okay? Um, if you're graduating in 23, that means that you can do one of two options. You can either use like six months, really study hard and pass it before 2024, or you can pass some parts and then take the rest in 2024. And if you are graduating in 24, what can you do? You just have to take the change exam, <laughs> um, but fear not. So we, as a CPA review course provider, we are fully prepared to help you prepare and pass your exam. So, um, you know, this, these are the CP exam blueprints. I'm sure most of you don't know what this is. Um, essentially, this is the skeleton of the CP exam. If they make any changes to the exam, this is where they make the changes first. So you can see all of the different skill sets as well as the different topics that will be tested on the exam. And we actually will be receiving the updated blueprints for the 2024 evolution way in advance in order to map out all of our lecture videos, our textbooks, our questions, even our flashcards to fully prepare our users to combat and overcome the 2024 evolution. So even if you're graduating 2024, don't be scared, you will be in good hands, alrighty? Now moving on to the structure of the exam, this is what you can expect. There are always five test slips. You will always start off with multiple choice and with task-based simulation. So while you are within one test slit, you can jump around the questions as much as you need to. Let's say you're answering a multiple choice question and you're debating between A or B. I would recommend that you just flag it, move on and get back to it later because per multiple choice, you actually only have about a minute to a minute and 24 seconds. When you're taking an exam, a minute can fly right by. So time strategy is pretty important for the exam. Once I move on from testlet one to testlet two, I'm never able to go back to testlet one. So before you move on from any testlet, you wanna make sure that you have finished all of the questions, but also giving yourself some time to review because there are many times where a candidate will get to the end of test slip five. They'll still have 40 minutes left on their time clock. That's 40 minutes they could have spent to review test slips one through four. So again, um, you do wanna make sure you've completed your questions, but also giving yourself a little bit of time to review. At the end of each testlet, they are going to tempt you and ask you if you want to take a break. You are more than likely to want to run away, um, but you have to be strong and stay till the end of testlet three, where they are nice enough to give you a free 15-minute break. Um, if some of you have professors who are CPAs, I'm sure they're like, you guys are so lucky. They didn't give us any breaks, blah, blah, blah. But um, you do get 15 minutes, but you do have to get fingerprinted back in. So probably get back to your seat five minutes earlier so you can get back into the test mode. Um, another thing, try not to eat too much before the exam. You don't want to have to go to the restroom. Um, try not to drink too much water, drink too much coffee. You don't want to again, constantly be having to run to the restroom. I would also recommend bringing a light snack, such as a granola bar or some nuts to eat during your break. Four hours is quite a long time, alrighty? Moving on to the weight of the scores, it's 50-50. BEC, a little different where 15% will go to your short essay questions. And what does it take to pass the CP exam? It takes a 75. Um, so it's not a negatively scored exam. You do not start off with 100, get it docked off for things you get incorrect. Rather, it is a compilation of points for the things that you got correct. So on exam day, if you're like, I don't know how to do this, just take your best educated guess because there is a chance you will get it correct and get some partial or even full credit. And you know, unless you're really aiming to get the Elijah Watts Award, where you have to get 89 on three of your CP exams, um, you know, 75 is 
said to be the best score that you can get because it is barely passing, but you are passing. No employer or nobody is going to ask you, what score did you get on that exam? It doesn't matter. As long as you get a 75 and above, you are golden, unless you're trying to get the Elijah Watts Award. Um, but moving on to time strategies. So actually, when we ask candidates, what the hardest thing on exam day was, many times more than content, they will see that time is very tricky. In real life, we're used to time moving forward, but on exam day, it's gonna be the opposite. It's gonna go from four hours, 359, 358. And if that is a structure that you're not used to, it can take a really big toll on your scores. So going in on exam day with a little bit of structure is gonna be really crucial to make sure that you are staying within time. So using FAR as our example, on exam day, let's say that I've completed testlet one, but I've only used 30 minutes. What should I do, guys? What do you think I should do? I've only spent 30 minutes to complete testlet one. Review. And if yes. you really <laughs> feel confident, then move on. Yes, thank you, Catherine. So yes, you want to go ahead and review, but vice versa, let's say I've completed testlet one, but I've used a whole hour. That means that I have to pick up my pace in testlet two so that I can get to my task-based simulations in the later testlets because going back to the score, it's 50-50, right? So on FAR, we have 66 MCQ while we only have eight task-based simulations. That means one TBS makes up a pretty significant chunk of your score. Hence, you need to allot yourself enough time to get to these task-based simulations. So um, again, having a little bit of time strategy is gonna be very important for your score. Moving on even further for time, you are gonna receive a whiteboard and a marker on exam day at Prometric Center. As soon as you sit down, I would recommend writing the, down the timestamps you should be done with each test slip by. So um, I would probably just write T1, 315, T2, 230, T3, two hours, so on. Um, and just so that you don't have to calculate, oh, I should be done with this next test slip by that. Like if you write it down, you have a good basis of when you should be moving on or not and staying within the time frame. Per multiple choice, you have about a minute to a minute and 24 seconds, task-based simulations anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes, research about 10 minutes, short essay questions about 15 minutes each. Did you have a question, Albert? Uh, yeah, I wanted to know how strict are they when it comes to the actual answer that you put for a task-based simulation? Uh, some questions are like decimals off. Do they adjust for that difference or do you have to get the exact uh, decimal number? That is a great question. Um, I don't know into that detail, like how they do the scoring. I don't think many people know how they score in that detail, I guess, but um it's great. The CP exam in its entirety is graded by a computer. So it's coded, you know, it's a program coded to basically grade the exam. The only time a human will sit down and grade your exam is only going to be for the BEC section for Tesla 5, where the last Tesla is three short essay questions. Um, and so if you have a borderline score of 74, 75, or 76, a human will sit down, read through your three essays, or they actually only read two of the three essays, but they're going to read your essays and they will bump you down to a 74 or bump you up to a 76. So that decimal question, um, I think it is pretty down to a T because it's a computer grading it. So um, I'm sure you do have to give that exact answer in order to get the score. However, for task-based simulations, it's not just one question that they ask you. It could be anywhere from like three. So it can be like multiple choice, fill in the blank, um, but it can be anywhere from like one one to two like questions they ask you to like 20 different things that they ask you. So on task-based simulations, you are able to get partial credit versus on multiple choice, you can only get um, full or no credit. So I hope that answers your question. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No problem. Alrighty, so the third E is going to be ethics. So this is going to be one of the least of your worries, I would say, during your CPA licensure process. This is a take-home open book exam, so not a very ethical exam as everybody's cheating on it, but it is 50 multiple choice questions. You need a 90% to pass. You get six attempts. Now, um, even though they give you six attempts, try not to be the person that uses all six attempts. So this open book that they give you is like a 400 page book. They recommend like three to four hours for this exam. So once you get it, just try to complete it on the first time and just get it done and out of the way. The last E you will need is going to be work experience. So in the state of California, you will need one year or 2,000 hours of work experience under a licensed active CPA. If you plan on going into audit or ever opening up your own practice, it is mandatory that 500 of the 2,000 hours are signing off audits. This is not 2,500 hours you need, it's 500 of the 2,000 hours. And these 2,000 hours are something that you can fulfill before, during, or after you take your exams. They also do not have to be just from one firm or one company. Like if you did an internship there, um, they you can get the work credit for there. Um, if you did a full-time position at another firm, you can get those hours. So um, yeah, it doesn't have to be all at one place and you don't have like a timeline when you need to get these hours completed by. Yes, Catherine. So... Is that on the responsibility of the companies to keep track of your hours? For example, like if I take my CPA in like two or three years, but I had an internship earlier this year, should I have been the one tracking my hours or do I just need to stay in contact with the department at my previous firm and hope that they kept my hours? Yeah, so I would make it your own responsibility. These are the hours that you want for your licensure. So um, I would say that it is in your responsibility. But with that in mind, I would say that most employers do keep track of how many hours an employee has worked just because of um, payment and billing purposes. So um, there is a form that you can get signed by the supervisor you work with to give you the credit for those hours. So yeah, because I was I wondering say, how we would submit those hours. Right. Like, right. is it just like a self vouch? Yep, got these hours. Here's the uh -uh. company's. Or is it like the if company has to the sign? Case, yeah, if that were the case, everybody would get their 2000 hours like that. Right. So um, it does have to be the supervisor who signs it off for you and approves of it. Awesome. All righty. Well, moving on. Um, yeah, well, yeah, that is pretty much all you need for your CPA license and that extra million dollars. You have to pass all four parts of the exam within 18 months. You have to get 20 extra units in accounting, 10 units in ethics, pass your ethics exam within two years, as well as get your 2000 hours of work experience. So now that I have covered some of the basics of the CPA exam, I do want to bring up the challenges to passing the exam. So we actually went ahead and did a survey and we asked past candidates, what were the hardest things about your exam process? And time after time, these were the four things. So um, I want to know what you think might be your biggest obstacle when you begin your process. So um, why don't you all go ahead and write in the chat what you think might be your biggest obstacle once you begin your exam process. Do you think it will be the difficult concepts of the exam that prevent you from passing the exam? Is it going to be the time-consuming aspect of the study process? Are you a procrastinator um, or even the expense aspect of the exam process? So I will give you all a moment to write it down. <laughs> all four. <laughs> Spending time, procrastination, difficulty time. All four. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for sharing. So, um, you know, with the difficulty of the CPA exam, yes, it's a difficult exam. Um, they often say it's a river that is a mile wide and an inch deep because you'll be jumping from topic to topic to topic so quickly. And you do have to have a really good understanding of those concepts 
in order to pass your exam. So the national average definitely does reflect the difficulty of the exam. It is a 48.5%. So that number means out of every 10 students who go into SIP with the exam, only four or five are coming out with a passing score on their first try. At UROLD, we are able to now bring our users to a 94% pass rate, um, but that number means out of every 10 of our users who go into SID, nine or 10 are coming out with a passing score on their first try. And you know, with the CP exam, this is definitely something that you want to try and pass on that first attempt because earlier you saw each time you fail a part, you will be paying an extra $275 for the $50 reapplication fee and the $200 um, some dollar exam fee. And not to mention the hours that you're going to spend re-preparing and re-studying for it, and also the four hours on exam day. So, um, you know, in the state of California, I think most employers give you 12 days of PTO, not a lot. Um, and most firms, they do allow you to sit for all four exams on company time. But many times, if it's going to be your second time, they make you use your PTO. And that is not what you want to do. You want to use those four hours of PTO to relax and go on vacation. So um, definitely when you do begin your process, you want to make it a goal to pass each exam on that first attempt, not only so that you are saving time, but also your money and energy. So what are we at UWorld Roger going to do to help you combat the difficulty of the CP exam? First off, we will help you master the difficult concepts through our wonderful instructor, Roger Phillips. So um, actually, if you have never heard of Roger or seen one of, one of his lecture videos before, um, I'll give you a rundown of who he is. Basically, he has been teaching CP exam content for over 30 years now. Um, and how many of you think that CP exam content is really fun and exciting and entertaining? Raise your hand, please. Who thinks it's really fun and exciting? Yeah, so CP exam content is really dry and boring, right? So um, it is going to be important to find an instructor that can keep you awake, keep you engaged. And I'm confident that if you have Roger as your instructor, he can do just that. So let me quickly play a short clip of him. What we call a qualified charitable organization. Therefore, it's not deductible. So you've got to be giving it to a charitable organization. Oops. But we can be giving things like property. We could be giving things like cash. You could be giving things like appreciated stock. It doesn't mean something you appreciate, but it's gone up in value. Now, the limitation is about 50% of AGI, which stands for adjusted gross income. That means that we're going to take on the face of your, the front of your 1040 and basically say, how much is adjusted gross income? Let's say it's 100 grand. The most you can deduct is 50% of that. The rest you're going to carry forward. Now, when we talk about giving, I've got these cute nephews. I go, hey, give me five, high five, low five, give me five. You carry the rest forward for five years. Get it? That's cute. Now, the other thing that's changed for 2018, 19 through 2025 is you can deduct 60% for cash contributions. Used to be 50, went up to 60. I also mentioned just now about appreciated stock up to 30% of your AGI adjusted gross income. The other one is a miscellaneous, other miscellaneous. C-O-M is other miscellaneous. That would be, for example, like gambling. So I love going to Vegas. Come on, lucky seven. Ugh, I always lose, but I look around and it's so beautiful. Why are these casinos so beautiful? Because I'm a loser. I lost a lot of money, loser, 3D loser. Any way you look at it, you're still a loser. So that would be other miscellaneous. Yep, so there is Roger Phillips. Um, and, you know, one of the things that differentiates our course from some of the other is, is that we have one lecture video for all four parts, not to mention that he is a ball of energy. So he's like jumping off the wall. And we actually have a lot of firm staff who are preparing for their exams and they wake up at ungodly hours like 5 a.m to start studying before their work day and they're like I'm so tired but I pop one of Roger's lecture videos on he's actually able to keep me awake and engaged and I also attend I would say like 20 meet the firms per semester or more um, and every time I go I have like a partner a manager come up to me and tell me, I took Roger 12 years ago and I still remember his mnemonic. So um, Roger is a really great instructor. If 
you want an engaging, exciting lecture, Roger is your man. But moving on, um, I actually want to quickly jump into our um, course and show you what studying for the exam actually looks like. So um, I'm sure many of you are like, how do you even study for the exam? So let me quickly show you. So today I will be going through the um, Ural Roger course. Oh. So here is a Ural Roger course. This is unlimited access. So there is no expiration date. Um, so I will go ahead and go into the far section for today. So um, I did see many of you did choose time as an obstacle that you foresee. So yes, many of you will be studying for the exam while working full time. So it's gonna be essential that you have a course that helps you maximize your study time. Um, and so that is why we have created this thing called Smart Path. Um, a lot of people think in order to pass the exam, they have to answer every single question within the course. That is a very popular misconception. By doing so, you can actually overstudy and confuse yourself on exam day. So with Smart Path, we have set targets for you. We have a set percentage score you want to hit per chapter, as well as a target number of questions. Your goal is going to be to hit those two targets. Once you hit those two, you don't need to waste any more time. You can go ahead and move on. So we actually were able to create these targets for you by looking at the data from our old users who scored really well on their exams. And um, that's how we came out with these targets. And this is actually personalized to you. So for all of our users, the target percentage is going to be the same. However, your target number of questions will be different for each user. So um, Gemma could only have to answer 111 questions if basic concepts is a concept that she really understands well, versus she might have to answer 44 questions within revenue recognition to hit this target of 86%. So with SmartPath, not only are you able to save your study time by only answering the questions that you have to, you also get diagnostics as to when you are going to be ready to sit or not so that you can build that confidence as you go through the questions and the course. So um, the first thing you do obviously want to do is choose a study planner. I'm um, not going to go into the study planner too much for the sake of time. Um, but the next area that I want to share is the question. So when you are in practice mode, you want tutor in time mode on. Actually, let me show you the lecture videos first. So um, there is Roger Phillips again, oh, if it loads. So there is Roger Phillips again. Um, and then everything you do to study is gonna be online. So you could do this on your computer on, or on the mobile app. You can turn captions on, you can make him bigger, um, full screen. And then there's also the e-textbook, which you can highlight as well as take notes. Any notes that you take will show up right here but let's go ahead and move on to the questions as that is where you'll be spending the breadth of your time. So you can either answer questions from the chapter or by topic specifically. Um, today, let's do six questions, let's see. So when you are answering questions within our course, you will notice two things. First is that there are a lot of visuals. So earlier I told you that we were able to adopt over the MCAT question model, right? So um, these answer explanations are pretty much what the MCAT model questions look like. So um, you'll see a visual and, you know, we as humans actually are able to retain 60% more of the information that we see through a visual. So um, we've gone ahead and try to add these sort of visuals to our answer explanations. And if there is one that you can you like, you can save it to a flashcard. Next is that whether you get a question correct or incorrect, we always tell you why C was correct, but also why A, B, and D are incorrect. But let me see if the next question is a little better for that. Ah, yes. So here um, I chose D, I got it incorrect. 
but we tell you why B is the correct answer and also why A, C, and D are incorrect. And this is really important when you're preparing for the CP exam. You do not want to just move on from a question because you got it correct. You want to understand why that's the correct option, but also why the other three options are incorrect so that if it were to show up on exam day, you are able to recognize it and still get it correct. Um, even after you've read the explanation and you still don't understand, you're able to click into references on the bottom and that will actually pop open the lecture video and the e-textbook that covers this concept. So um, we are actually sort of revolutionizing the way that we recommend students study for the exam. Before it used to be just watch the lectures, read the textbook, answer the questions. Now, many of our users are able to pass their exams by just answering our questions and then referencing the lectures when they need it. So they're able to save even more time now. Alrighty, so let me quickly finish this. Again, even if you get it correct, we tell you why B is correct and why A, C, and D are incorrect. So last question. And then even the text you're able to highlight and add it to flashcards as well. So I'm just going to add that to the back of that flashcard. So once you submit a test slip, you are going to get diagnostics right away. We let you know what percentage of other people are getting it correct. So if 80% of people are getting it correct and you got it wrong, you should probably go back and review. Um, we're also going to tell you how long you spend per question. Again, per multiple choice, a minute to a minute and 24 seconds is your goal. Um, I'm going to show you the exam simulation and the flashcards, and then we'll go ahead and play our Kahoot game. So um, on our course, we have practice exams, and you can take an unlimited number of these. So if you want to take 20 exams, you can go ahead and do so. Um, but I will say just one or two is more than enough for preparation in exam day. Um, so first two testlets are multiple choice. I'm just going to move on to the last three testlets. Um, again, multiple choice for Tesla two. And then this is Tesla three. So this is a document review simulation. So um, here you use the given exhibit in order to answer the question. So for a question like this, you have like, you have many questions to answer. So um, this is probably a question that's gonna take you like 15 to 20 minutes. So a good piece of advice is to sort of filter through the questions and see which one might be more time consuming than the other. And then this is just a basic task-based simulation. Alrighty, so testlets four and five also are going to be task-based simulation testlets, but I'm not gonna go through the whole exam. Albert, did you have a question? Yeah, I actually wanted to know if you would recommend, I'm not sure um, if you have that particular information, but I wanted to see if you could recommend whether we should take the practice tests first before starting our actual um, study. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, the CP exam is given in order to test the skills that first and second year new hires need to be successful in their role. So although all of the things that you learn in your undergrad, they're going to build a very good foundational knowledge for what you know about accounting, it's probably not going to be enough for you to pass the CP exam. So um, that's sort of where, you know, CP review courses come in and teach you all the things that they don't teach you in your undergrad. Um, so um, I don't think it's a bad idea to do the practice exam first, but um, I would say if anything, just answer questions and use SmartPath and then um, reference the textbook, I guess. So um, the method that I recommend is to um, hit your SmartPath targets after you've hit your smart path targets, do the cram course. The cram course is like the final review your professor holds the lecture before the midterm or the final. And then after you do the hit your smart path targets, do the cram course, then you do a practice exam two weeks before exam day, another one one week before exam day. So that is sort of the method that I recommend, but you can study in whatever way that you would like to. Everybody has a different learning style. So if you think taking a practice exam to know where your weaknesses and strengths are, you definitely can do so. Thank you.
Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, within the course, there are flashcards. So this was the one that I had created earlier. And then we also have expert decks. So even when you're in our flashcards, we want you to save your time. So this is new. This is space repetition technology. Um, pretty much if you look on the back of each flashcard, you have three options. Again, good and easy. If you think a word is easy, you pretty much have it memorized. We're not going to show you the word for another four days because we don't want to waste your time. Um, if you think a word is medium, so you understand it but not memorized yet, we're going to show you the word within one day. And lastly, a difficult word we are going to show you within one minute so that you can repeatedly see it and start to understand and memorize it. So. Um, all throughout our course, we are trying to help you save your time. Alrighty, let me go back to the course now. So at this point, you are probably wondering what makes UWorld Roger different from the other providers. So here we actually have an example question from one of our competitors. Not going to name drop, but it is one of our competitors. Um, and so I just want you all to take a look at the answer explanation that is provided here. So it's a multiple choice question. I chose Z. I got it correct. And they tell me the definition of what the FASB conceptual framework is. So um, yeah, they are explaining to me what the FASB conceptual framework is, but I'm not learning a whole lot through the explanation that is provided. Here we have another example from one of our competitors. So here they do give me a little bit longer of an explanation, but if you really deep dive and look at what they're telling you, I'll summarize it for you all because it's kind of a lot to read. They tell me that this is an AICP release question and it will never be used on the exam again. They also let me know that A, B, and D cannot be the correct answer, which only leaves C to be the correct answer. So um, I wouldn't say that I'm learning a whole lot about the concept through the explanation, right? I'm not mastering the concept with the explanation that is provided. Um, now here we have a UWorld Rogers CPA review question. So um, as I mentioned earlier, through the acquisition of UWorld, we have been able to invest millions into our content and these explanations that we provide. And actually our content team spends over one month per question to really master it and make sure that you are able to master the concepts just by reading and processing the explanation. So again, you will see an illustration that is paired with almost all of the explanations. We tell you why A is correct and why B, C, and D are incorrect. We give you that little summary at the end. And even after you don't understand it, you can click into references, watch the lecture video and fully master that concept. So um, the time to invest in yourself is now. I saw that a couple of you did choose procrastination as an obstacle that you foresee. How many of you have procrastinated on a homework assignment from this semester? Raise your hand. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I'm glad you guys are truthful. Um, you know, it's just in human nature that we tend to procrastinate on things that we don't want to do or that we're annoyed to do or, uh, you know, but um, with the CP exam, this is definitely something a lot of people will procrastinate on. And I get it. It's a very scary process to start. You know, it's going to be time consuming. However, you do also know that if accounting is a career you're serious about, getting your CPA license is going to be one of the biggest and first stepping stones that you can achieve, um, you know, to start making that extra million dollars, to start getting recognition from upper management, to be eligible to be promoted when the time comes around. So, um, you know, sometimes they say the CP exam is like a hot potato. Whose responsibility is it? Is it the responsibility of the university? Is it the responsibility of the firm? Or is it the responsibility of you? And the answer it is, is it's your responsibility. This is your future and your um, bank money on the line. Um, and so knowing that you definitely should try to get your process started ASAP. Data actually shows that the age group after college has a 13% lower chance of passing the exam than someone straight out of college. 
As a recent graduate, you know how to sit down, watch lecture videos, practice, answer questions. So um, get your process started as soon as possible. I also know that many students are dying to graduate and start making money. They can't wait to start working. Um, and so I know a lot of people, they will graduate in May and start working in June or July. Um, so if possible, I would recommend that you try and hold off starting work for a couple of months, maybe four or five months. So if you graduate in May, see if you can start working in October so that you can use a couple of those months to really try and get at least one or two parts of your exam passed and done before you start working full time. You have to keep in mind, it is going to be quite a transitionary period of your life. You're going from being a student to working five days a week, 40 plus hours a week. And, you know, when I started my process, it was a very stressful time of my life. I was like, I really have to work 40 hours a week. Um, it was a lot for me to process. It was a very difficult transition. And you don't want to be stressed about, you know, a new job being having to adult and also studying for the CP exam. So, um, you know, really try and see if you can pass a couple of parts before working full time. Hypothetically, let's say that you're about to graduate and you do not have an offer yet. Don't worry, this is the perfect chance for you to get one or two parts of the exam passed. Throw that on your resume, start applying, and I promise you, you will get a lot more emails back than you did when you didn't have any parts of the exam passed. So, um, here we have a testimonial from Ali. She passed all four exams within 11 months. She credits her passing to SmartPath and the structuring content. Um, when she got to the exam, the questions were extremely accurate. And then we also have Nishil. Um, he passed all four parts within 18 months. So he was kind of cutting it close, but he still did it. And he passed, he credits his passing scores to our revolutionary question bank. The questions were really accurate to the actual exam. I totally butchered that, but anyways. Um, so as a thank you for allowing me to speak to you all on the CP exam and also introduce you to the UL Roger course, I wanna offer you all a $1,600 discount on our Elite Unlimited course. This is the course that I showed you today. With the UL Roger Elite Unlimited, there is no expiration date. So even after you pass the exams, you will be able to log in see all of the information anytime the exam is updated. We change everything within our course, the lectures, questions, everything in accordance to the AICPA blueprints. Um, and you also get four physical textbooks with the Elite. There's also a mobile app. Um, you get the SmartPath technology as well as the space repetition technology flashcards. So, um, you know, um, we still know that $13.99 is a lot of money, so we do have payment plans available through a third party called Affirm. Um, and, uh, you know, we know that $13.99 is a lot. Even in 10 years, that's going to be a lot of money, but this is going to be a $1,400 investment into your career and also that extra million dollars. So, I would say it's pretty worth it, right? But um, on the mobile app, you are able to actually download up to five lecture videos and watch with no Wi-Fi or data. You can access the flashcards, smart path, everything on there that you can on a computer. And if you already did not know, many firms in efforts to stay competitive are reimbursing or even offering bonuses. So let's say that you end up purchasing our Euro Roger course ahead of getting uh, an offer letter, we are we will be able to bill your firm at a later time for you, or you might even get a bonus. So firms like BPM, you get a $5,000 bonus if you pass all four exams within one year. So that already well over covers the cost of the $13.99. So now I will open the floor for any questions. And then if there are not any, we can go ahead and play the Kahoot game. For those of you who have to leave and have class, I understand um, it was a pleasure seeing and meeting you all. Yeah, but any questions? And then if not, we'll go ahead and jump into the Kahoot game. Awesome, I will go ahead and open up the Kahoot game then. Okay. 
So get your phones out and then um, you go to kahoot.it and then the game should load in just a moment. Yeah, so you go to kahoot.it and then you enter the pin 4867885. Sorry, I had a quick question from a student. Yeah. Um, so she asked, sorry if you mentioned this before, but how long does it take for results from each test to come out? Yeah, so um, with COVID and all, um, I would say it's typically two to three weeks. Um, now I would say it's anywhere from like two to four weeks. So there's no like set, time but it ranges anywhere from two to four weeks now i would say moment to join maybe like another minute and then go ahead and get started Squid Game. Did you guys all watch it? <laughs> okay, let's give it like 30 more seconds and then we'll get started. Okay, I am impatient, so we'll get started. <laughs> Alrighty, the first one is a really random one. So, um, oh, actually, no, it's not. Which of the following majors will qualify? for the CP exam. And then with Kahoot, the quicker you answer, the more points that you get. So speed is the key for the game. Ah, wow, all of you guys got it right, yes. So you don't necessarily have to be an accounting major, you can be any major as long as you have 24 and 24 in accounting and business. Um, approximately how much extra money can you earn with your CT license over the span of your career? Wow, all of you got it right. So yes, an extra million dollars approximately, especially in California. Uh, where can I go to see an overview of the topics covered on the CT exam? Yes, it is the CP exam blueprint. So anytime the exam is changed, that, that is where they first make those updates. All right, Joel is in the lead. Let's see if Ashley can catch up. Okay, um, how many days is my ATT or authorization to test valid for? Ninety days, yes. Ninety days to choose which ones you would like to sit and pay for them. Um, alrighty. Oh, double points. How many months is my notice to schedule valid for? How exciting! I never saw the double points before. Alrighty. Yes, notice schedule is good for nine months in California. Many other states are six months. Actually, Nin, Nin is in the lead. How many hours of work experience do you need to get your CPA license? 2,000 hours, approximately 2,000 hours, which is equivalent to one year. Alrighty. How many forms of government issued IDs must I bring on exam day? Ah, very good. Yes. Driver's license too. So driver's licenses and passports. Um, if you do not have both though, you are able to bring a credit or debit card, like I mentioned, but you have to bring at least one. Alrighty, let's see if Mariana can catch up. What percentage pass rate does SmartPath bring for raw CPA users? Yes, 94% now, highest in the market. Um, okay, let's see. 
true or false, the 18 month cycle begins the day I receive my score. False, yeah, it begins the day that you sat and took the exam. Alrighty, Nin is still in the lead, sorry if that's wrong. Um, it is not mandatory you take the far section first. True question. <laughs> Ah, very good. Yeah, you can sit for the exams in any order you would like to. Alrighty. Um, how long does the Roger CP review elite unlimited course last? Yes, there is no expiration date, free updates um, as long as you have the course. Alrighty, last question. What time saving tools does Euro Roger offer for their users? Uh, yes, all of the above. So we have Smart Path, the fully featured mobile app, and the space repetition technology for flashcards. So let's give a little drum roll. Um, and third, we have Isaac. Great job. Um, Mariana in second place, and in first, we have Nin! Yay! <laughs> Thank you all for playing my game. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for having me. I hope the information was um, informative and you learned something about the CP exam and also built some confidence. I do want to offer myself as a resource to you. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will be more than happy to set up like an advising session with you where we can go over any of your questions or also walk through the course. But um, yeah, I will give you the rest of your days back if there are no more questions.